If you've not heard, perhaps not, Nate McMillan has walked the plank. He's been given the boot, asked to take a long walk off a short pier. He out, he gone in Atlanta as he will grab some bench. The former now head coach of the Atlanta Hawks, the team making the announcement on Tuesday. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like we talk a lot about the Atlanta Hawks because we do not. We'll talk about them when the playoffs start. Some assistant named Joe Prunty, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He's the interim coach. Good luck to him. Godspeed. Joe Prunty, P-R-U-N-T-Y. Never heard of him. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is either. I don't know, but he's got the gig now. Congratulations. All right, so let us discuss. The question on this one, it's not so much about Nate McMillan at the start. The question is really what this says about the star player for the Atlanta Hawks. Is it true? That Trey Young is the coach killer in the ATL. I am nodding my head. Yes. Yes. I know the player apologist will say, no, that's not true. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Absolutely true. I've got machete, ruthless compassion, and eggshells. And we're going to put this together like a well-oiled machine. And we'd like to alert all the affiliates. Coming up in a few minutes, we will have a stunningly amazing edition of Mallard of the Third Degree, but we'll get to this right now. So my first thought on the question, is it true that Trey Young is the coach killer? Uh, The obvious thing is the Hawks, considering where they were supposed to be, where they are right now, under 500, they they're in the eighth spot, I believe, in the East, they're wicked bad compared to where they were, were supposed to be. And things have been bleak. Atlanta's been mostly taking one step forward and a step back and two steps forward and two steps back. So they're twisting in the wind. But if you are indeed looking for the person responsible for Nate McMillan's being uh, being removed here as the coach in Atlanta, the reason Nate McMillan is no longer coaching the Atlanta Hawks is simple. The buck stops with Trey Young. It is on Trey Young. If Trey Young ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. It's a superstar league. Trey Young is the franchise. He had a very public kerfluffle with Nate McMillan. We talked about it on the the airwaves of Fox Sports Radio back in December. It was a delayed reaction. But Young, what he did is he took his machete out and started wailing away. A little payback, right? In case you have forgotten, Young skipped an Atlanta game over bad blood with his then-coach, Nate McMillan. Now, we are only getting the watered-down, diluted version of what happened. I promise you it's a much better story than the one that has been given to the public. But the story that's out there is that Trey Young had missed the team shoot-around, McMillan got upset with him and told him to stay home, and so Trey Young stayed home. That happened back in December. We said, well, that happened in December, and McMillan's out of work now. These, te- these things aren't related. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. And you look at the resume of Trey Young now, Nate McMillan. He gone. You remember who was coaching before Nate McMillan took over? Lloyd Pierce. Another one bites the dust. He was sacked because he didn't pacify the wants and needs of Trey Young. So that's the person right there, Trey Young. He's the one that wears the pants in the ATL, and he's the coach killer. Now, second, why, we'll ask the question, why did Nate McMillan not succeed with the Hawks? And outside of the obvious, which is Trey Young didn't like him, his star player was not on board, uh, McMillan failed to adapt to the modern ball player. Like, Nate McMillan's from the old generation of NBA players, and he wanted his team to approach the game with that mindset, not the soft mindset of the modern player. And so they were at loggerheads. And he kept this ruthless compassion uh, for his approach to basketball, his old-school values, and those things do not combine. They don't intermingle with the the players of today, and so a storm has been brewing, and Nate McMillan's a guy, when he played with the Sonics back in his NBA days, he was a guy that had some grit to him. He was not 
projected to have a great NBA career. He played played a long time considering his skill set in the NBA. But you know, and I know, based on the comments coming out of Atlanta, that the GM did not want to do this. That the general manager of the Atlanta Hawks did not want to fire Nate McMillan, but had no other choice. And the GM's this guy named Landry Fields. And what is my evidence? All right, let me give you my evidence. So this guy, Landry Fields, he was evangelizing the coaching skill set of the guy that he had just fired. <laughs> the guy that he had just told to get away, we're done with you, we don't want you anymore. He was singing the praises of the, the, the things that Nate McMillan does well, the graciousness of Nate McMillan, the work ethic. Uh, and only saying the team needed another voice, but he praised his professionalism, his leadership, said what a class act Nate McMillan was. And he just said, well, we need another voice, which is really a whistle. It's a dog whistle that Trey Young did not want to play for Nate McMillan anymore, that the locker room had been lost. All right, final thought. Final thought here. Is the Atlanta coaching gig a quality gig? So, the question would be, what is your definition of quality? I look at Atlanta. I take a couple steps back, and I look out at the, the Serengeti of the NBA, the landscape of the NBA. and it, To me, that's a standard-issue job. You have some talent. Your top player's a diva. You got to win the locker room. Nate McMillan lost the locker room. He had the locker room when he took over, lost the locker room. So that means whoever ends up, rising up the coaching ranks to get the full-time job in Atlanta is going to have to eat an egg salad sandwich. He's going to have to walk on eggshells, do the old tightrope walk, tiptoeing around the locker of Trey Young, a hop, skip, and a jump. Because if you get these guys singing on the same song sheet, uh, the Eastern Conference is wide open. The Celtics are playing amazing this season. And there's some other teams that look good. Milwaukee's been coming on like gangbusters. But in a playoff series, Atlanta's got enough talent that they can go blow for blow, and they can deliver some haymakers to match up with just about anybody in a really weak Eastern Conference in in comparison to the Western Conference. So it's a job that is standard issue but is drawing big names, some of the names being floated out, Ime Udoka who got sacked by the Celtics, outlawed verboten in Boston. Quinn Snyder, medicine man, late of the Utah Jazz on the road to another job. And Kenny Atkinson, who turned down a head coaching job last offseason to go back to the Golden State Warriors, the former Nets coach, has also been mentioned. And those are the top names. Now, as for Nate McMillan, if I gave you $1,000 of funny money, And I said, is Nate McMillan going to be a full-time NBA head coach again? Are you going to bet yes or no with that $1,000? So I am going to bet that he will not be a head coach again. That that's it. Not that he doesn't deserve another opportunity. He's been not a great playoff coach, but he's been fine during the regular season. But this is likely it for Nate McMillan as an NBA coach. And because of what happened with Trey Young, and the shifting to the younger coach, and Nate McMillan's in his, I believe, late 50s now, so you're starting to get a little long in the tooth. And you're, you're long in the tooth unless you've got a bunch of championships, and then you can keep coaching as long as you want. But he had a chance. He coached the, he's, he's been around so long, he coached the Supersonics, which have been gone for a long time, the Trailblazers, the Pacers, and now finally the Atlanta Hawks. So it was a good run for Nate McMillan, but it ends in Atlanta. It's 